Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have a very interesting example of a distributed load on a beam. On the left side of the beam, there's no load at all. Then at 2.4 meters away from point A, we have a load pushing down all the way out to about 4 meters from point A. And then we start having a load pushing upward. We would call that a negative load because it's pushing against the beam, starting from 0 newtons per meter, increasing to 5,000 newtons per meter by the time we reach point B. Notice that at the downward load or the load on the beam here from between 2.4 and 4 meters, we, we go all the way from 4,000 newtons per meter to zero newtons per meter. The question is, what is the reaction force at B? What we're looking for is, what is the force required at B to keep the beam in a, um, what we call steady state? Or a equilibrium state where nothing is moving. Again, we're going to use the very same technique as before. We're going to draw boxes, and since there's two segments right here, two load segments, we only need to have two boxes for the first two rows. Again, we need five rows. The first two rows are subdivided in the number of boxes required to represent the number of different load segments. We have two load segments here. And then we need three more rows down here. The first row represents the force on each individual load segment. The second row represents the x-coordinate of the moment, or I shouldn't say the moment, the x-coordinate of the centroid of each of the load segments. The third row is the total moment about a point. In this case, we're going to use A as a reference point, the moment, the total moment about A. The fourth row represents the total force represented by all the load segments. And then finally, we have the x-coordinate of the centroid, and let me move that over a little bit to the left, the x-coordinate of the centroid, because we know that it's equal to the total moment divided by the total load on the beam. Let's find, if this is called A1, the area 1, and this is called A2, let's find the total force contributions of these two. Now, A1 represents a positive load because it's a normal load on the beam, a2 can be considered a negative load because it's pushing up against the beam. It's a little bit against the x, x, y direction convention, but it makes more sense to think about A1 representing a positive load and A2 representing a negative load. A1 is equal to the area of this triangle. It's one half the base. The base is 1.6 meters and the height is 4,000 meters. That gives us 0.8 times 4,000, 3,200 newtons. That's the total load caused by A. A2 is equal to a negative one-half times the base, 2 meters, times the height, 5,000. One-half times 2 cancels out. This gives us a 5,000 newton load, but it's a negative load because it's pointing upward. The numbers in here, a positive 3,200 newtons and a negative 5,000 newtons. Now for the centroid. Remember with a triangular load distribution, the centroid is one-third the distance from the tallest portion down to the point right here. So it's one-third the distance of 1.6 meters added to 2.4 meters. X sub 1 is equal to 2.4 meters plus one-third times 1.6 meters. And x2 is equal to a starting point of 4 meters, plus, and since the triangle is turned around, it would be one-third the distance from the end here, or two-thirds the distance from the left, plus two-thirds times a distance of 2 meters. Let's find out what that is equal to. 1.6 times 1 divided by 3, and then plus 2.4, 2.93 meters. And for this one here, we get 4 divided by 3, that's 1 and a third, plus 4, that's 5.33 meters. That's 4 thirds, 1 and a third, 5.33 meters. Correct. That goes in here, 2.93 meters and 5.33 meters. That is relative, relative to point A. Those are the centroids of the two load segments. 
Now to find the total moment, we multiply these together. Notice that this will give us a negative moment relative to point A. Negative, it's not in the traditional sense of the moment because we always say that counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative, but remember, we have this as a positive load, this as a negative load, and we do it relative to point A. Multiplying these numbers together, times 3200 minus 5000 times 5.3333333 equals, and we get a total of 17,280, I believe it is, yes, 17,000 minus 17,280 Newton meters. Now to find the total force, here we have to take the absolute value of the forces. In other words, the total force is equal to the absolute value of force one plus the absolute value of force for force two. We have to do it that way to get the correct distance to the centroid. If we do that, this is equal to 3,200 Newtons plus the absolute value of a minus 5,000 Newtons, we get a total force contribution of 8,200 Newtons. Now, if we divide this by this, and again, to find the x-coordinate, we have to take positive values here. We take the 17,280 Newtons and divide by 8,200 Newtons, and we get a distance of 2.107 meters, about 2.1 meters from the right. And let me show you what that looks like. I need my red pen right here. The centroid is right here. It appears as if all the force, now the net force will of course be the net force, F net. We do have to take the the size into, into consideration is equal to a positive 3,200 Newtons minus a 5,000 Newtons, which is a minus 1,800 Newtons. In other words, there's an 1,800 Newton force pushing in this direction, causing a reactionary force at B. So this is force net in upward direction. Now, to find the force at B, we now do the following. We start at point A, we call that our reference point for the moment, the sum of all the moments at point A is equal to, we have a minus 1800 force, 1800 Newton force pushing upward, minus 1800 Newton force multiplied times the x coordinate of the centroid, 2.107 meters, plus, because B is acting in a downward position, F sub B acting at a distance of the length of the beam is 6 meters, causes F at B to be equal to a minus 1800 Newtons and be careful about the sign because if we oh this this has to of course add up to zero because the sum of the moments add up to zero so the force at B is equal to 1800 Newtons times 2.107 meters divided by 6 meters and that gives a total force of 1800 times 2.107 divided by 6 equals of 632 newtons. That's the reaction of force at B, keeping the beam from tipping over in this direction caused by this additional force pushing down at the bottom of the beam. A little bit tricky, so let's review it. Total force of the first segment, a positive 3200 newtons. Total force of the negative segment, the segment pushing back up against the beam from the bottom, is a five, not negative 5,000 newtons. The centroids at 2.93 meters, 5.33 meters. The total moment is indeed a negative. If you think about it as caused primarily by the load pushing down from the bottom of the beam, caused the beam to tip this way, that'll be the total moment. We multiply the total forces times the x coordinates of the centroids of the two segments, you get this as a total moment, about A. We then add up all the forces, but we add up the total magnitude of the force. We want the absolute value of that. We divide this number by this number, and we get a total distance of 2.107 meters. Again, we want a positive value. We know that the value is to the right of point A. Finally, then, to find the force at B, 
we sum up all the moments relative to point A, we have the moment caused by the total net force, which is 1800 newtons pushing in this direction at a distance of 2.107 meters, plus the force would be at 6 meters, solve for the force would be 632 newtons. The sign is not important as long as you realize that B must be pushing in a downward direction in order to represent the resting or the restoring force. This is the reactionary force that keeps the beam from tipping in this direction caused by the distributed load. And that's how we do that problem.